Do you know what I see when I look at you? That could go in a lot of directions. <laughs> but in all seriousness, do you know what I see when I look at you? I see some of the wealthiest, most privileged, most loved, most blessed, fully forgiven, and wisest people in the history of the world. In all seriousness, that's what I see when I look at you. And I can say that very confidently. Do you know why I can say that so confidently? Because of what John said in our verses. He said, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. You are a child of God. You are someone God the Father deeply cares for and loves. And so, yes, I can rightly and confidently say you are wealthy, privileged, loved, blessed, fully forgiven, and wise. You are a child of God. But do you always feel like that? Do you always feel like someone who is, is loved and cared for? Do you always feel wealthy and privileged and loved and blessed and forgiven and wise? When are some times where you, you haven't felt like that? Maybe when you received a devastating diagnosis or when the marriage problems continued and continued. When you were dissatisfied with where you're at in life as far as your career or your life as a parent. Or maybe when the finances just were not working out. Perhaps it was when you realized you're not the most talented or well-liked kid in school. Or it was when you fell into that temptation again and again. You and I don't always feel like the most well-loved and cared for people. And when we don't feel like that, we begin to ask the question, well, am I a child of God? And the reason you ask that question is because your life does not match your expectations of what you thought it meant to be a child of God. You know, you despair and you think, well, I, th I thought as a child of God, God would prevent that diagnosis from happening. I thought, as a child of God, my, my, my marriage would be filled with the, the most perfect and selfless love. I thought that as a child of God, I would feel satisfied in everything I do. I thought that as a child of God, God would richly provide all I need and want each and every day, including financially. I, I, thought, I thought that as a child of God, people would like me. You know, I, I thought as a child of God, I, I'd be able to say no to all the temptations I face. When you and I face temptations, when we, when we look at our life and it doesn't match our expectations of what we thought it meant to be a child of God, we despair. We're kind of like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. You all know who Eeyore is, I would think, right? Walk around moping, you know, woe is me, nobody likes me, my life's not easy. You, you despair when you look at your life and it doesn't match your expectations of what you thought it meant to be a child of God. And then on top of just internally despairing when you look at your life and it, it doesn't match what you expect, you, you feel like you're constantly having to prove yourself to others too. 
So if you, if you do online banking, you, you might get this. So if you do online banking, every time you log in, uh, whether it's on your computer or on your phone, they ask you to verify who you are in some way, right? Like you have to answer a security question, you have to type in a code that they texted to you, you have to scan your face, scan your thumbprint. You have to verify who you are, right? Do you ever feel like you're, you're trying to do that as a child of God? Like you feel like I have to prove it to somebody somehow? Because they look at your life and they say, I thought you were a child of God. Aren't, aren't children of God, aren't people who claim to be Christians supposed to feel loved and blessed and cared for and all the other things by God? And you look at your life and it's filled with a diagnosis, marriage problems, financial problems, dissatisfaction, not feeling loved, not feeling like you're liked, not able to say no to temptation. You feel like you have nothing to show for it when it comes to being a child of God. You feel like you can't verify who you are. And then you sit there and you question it. Well, am I a child of God? See, I thought you know, a loving parent would want to make sure their child knows they're loved and, and cared for. But I don't feel that way as I go through whatever difficulty I'm facing. So am I a child of God? I, I, don't, I don't feel like it. I, I just feel lost in a sin-filled world, lost in my own sin and without any hope. Am I a child of God? What did John say? He said, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. You are a child of God. You are someone God the Father deeply cares for and loves. And the reason the people around you might question it sometimes, the reason they might question your identity as a child of God, John says, the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. They don't know who God is. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know who the Savior is. They don't know what it means to be a child of God because they don't know what God actually says in his word. That's why they question who you are. But you know. You know who you are. And you know what God says in his word. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. God says you are a child of God. You are, are wealthy and privileged and loved and blessed and forgiven and wise. You are all of those things. No, it does not always feel like it as you live in a sin-filled world as you go through whatever problems and challenges you have in life. It doesn't always feel like that. But God says, you are. And someday you, you won't face those things. Someday you'll be with God for eternity. In eternity with God, there, there are no more problems of life. Think of all the problems you've ever faced, all the moments where you've had tears rolling down your cheeks, all the times you've been frustrated, all the, none of that exists in heaven. Like that's reality. That's when your life will be what, what you want it to be. It'll be perfect because you'll be with God. But John says, hey, you're not there yet. It has not yet been made known. Heaven is yours in the full. It, it is yours completely. But you're not there yet. You still live in a fallen and sin-filled world and are affected by all of the sin in this world. Well, well when? I mean, when can I have that life? When can I be with God for eternity? 
John says, we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. So on the unknown day that Jesus returns, John says that the day Christ appears, and he's going to appear in the same way we saw him disappear. So we read the ascension text a little bit ago. He ascended into heaven, blessing his people, glorious and victorious. He's going to return in that same way someday. Right now, he's continually blessing you each and every day. You're going to see him as he is, and it's on that day, John says, that we will be like him. Perfect and holy. That's when all of this will happen, John says. And you can be confident it's going to happen because you are a child of God. How do I know? Is this just some wishful thinking? Like, how do, how do I know that this is true? How can I be sure I can trust what this is saying? It's because of the only Son of God and what he did. See, God the Father sent his one and only Son into this world and he, he took on everything you face. He faced all the challenges and hardships. He faced all the temptations. And yet he was perfect. He lived a perfect life. And as he lived that life, he looked anything but like the Son of God. Like he did not take on the appearance people expected the Son of God to take on when God came into this world. He wasn't, he wasn't born in a palace but a barn. He wasn't wealthy but poor. He didn't even have a permanent residence. He wandered and traveled. The Son of Man had no place to lay his, lay his head, the scripture said. Just, just nowhere ever. And then at the end of his life, he chose to even look less like the Son of God. He was beaten and bloodied and nailed to a cross. God the Father even said, that's not my son. Like he abandoned his son in his time of need. Like your Savior Jesus, he, he suffered hell all for you so you will never have to suffer eternally. You think of all the, the suffering you face in this life. You're never going to have to go through that for eternity. It's only in the here and now that you, you have those moments, those difficulties. And after he died, he looked a lot different three days later. He had the appearance of the Son of God, victorious and glorious. He, he rose from the dead. He proclaims that victory to you. You are God's saved, loved child. And therefore, I can confidently say you are, you are wealthy because you have the wealth of heaven. You are privileged because you are known by God. Like intimately known by God. You are loved by the Almighty God with a love that you just can't even fathom. You're blessed because you're provided for each and every day with everything you need. Maybe not everything you want, but you do have what you need. You're fully and freely forgiven. There's nothing you need to do to be saved. No choosing, no deciding, just it's a gift. And then you're wise. Because you know the only way to heaven is by faith alone in your Savior, Jesus. You are a child of God. That is who you are, John says. And none of the challenges of this life can void your identity in Christ. It can't change. And knowing that, that is what gives you the strength and power to face each and every day. You're a child of God. Someone who's loved and cared for by God the Father. You know that this life, it's only temporary. Those challenges, those difficulties, they won't last. They have an end date. And that day is when Christ returns in the same way we saw him go into heaven. It's the day that you, get, you die and you'll be with Jesus forever. 
That's how you know for sure that you're a child of God. And we can look forward to that day confidently, the day that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You're a child of God. And an heir of eternal life, you have that guarantee from God, despite whatever you face in this life. Have you ever noticed how many different companies are out there that are meant to help you feel better about how you look and what you do in life? I mean, think about them. Mary Kay, Rogaine, Neutrogena, Weight Watchers, there's Indeed.com for your, your job. Like, there's all these different companies out there and their sole purpose is to help you feel better about what you look like or what you do or who you are. And yet, how do people feel after they use those products in those companies? They still look in the physical mirror or the mirror of life and they're dissatisfied and they despair by what they see. And when you and I, when we look in the mirror and we see all the hardships and pains and difficulties we've gone through, it's easy to now question the same thing. Am I a child of God? Who really am I? Do you know what God sees when he looks at you? Like, don't think about what I see now. Think about what God sees. He sees someone who's wealthy, privileged, loved, blessed, fully forgiven, and wise. That's what God sees when he looks at you. And what he sees is all that matters. You are a child of God and an heir of eternal life and nothing can change that fact. Amen.